The founding fathers considered the national debt to be theft from future generations. Disaster is a virtual certainty unless we rein it in. For the first two months of the fiscal year 2020, the U.S. government is on a path for a $2 trillion deficit, a new record. This path is unsustainable. Not to mention that if the price of oil gets out of control, we are in trouble. If job cuts keep happening, we are in trouble. The stock market will have its wings clipped this year. The Fed won't be able to fund a war and pump the market at the same time. Too many plates are spinning. Lipstick on a pig. Yeah, we got this. Underfunded liabilities are going to give all of us a huge wake-up call. Can't fix the economy? Start a war. How many times have we seen this play out? It's getting too predictable. The Fed has pumped $3 trillion into the market since September 17 and plans to pump another $2.8 trillion through January 18. The Fed is also buying $60 billion in treasuries a month. The collapse already started. Generally, when a collapse is about to accelerate, the elites use crisis events as cover to distract the public and produce scapegoats. Wagging the dog, so to speak. In this case, a war with Iran. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The collapse is a process, but people won't notice it until they wake up one day, and the dollar has been devalued by 50%. Or major exporting countries no longer accept the dollar as payment. The igniter could be the debt bubble, which is the nuke. A booming economy can no longer cure it. Too big now for Trump to defuse without it detonating. That was tried in the second half of 2018. Great job by Obama in keeping interest rates near zero for way too long, building a debt-fueled market bubble that is truly biblical. The igniter is margin debt in the markets. And the market can be tipped by the elites through several mechanisms to panic margin holders. Market crashes due to margin call panic and then nuclear chain reaction, recession hits. One hundreds of Russell 2000 zombie companies who are leveraged up to their eyeballs in debt, from leveraged stock buyback money grabs, can no longer service it and go belly up. The Fed can do nothing about that but will print more money, unemployment skyrockets, government tax revenues plummet, new taxes are created to service pensions, and so on and so on. Then progressive socialism rises as a lifeboat for the millions taking their last gasps as the US debt financial juggernaut slips below the surface. The water recedes, and we are left with a country that is now a dried-up swamp upon which to build utopia. The mother of all financial crisis will start this year. The financial crisis will be outside the USA. It is a politically caused crisis. Politicians never act before a crisis. And they never accept responsibility for what they have done. Here in the USA, the societal thinking is changing from, if you don't think like me, you are wrong, to, if you don't think like me, I hate you. The 2020 presidential election will be the most violent election since 1968. The losers of the election will not accept the result even more strongly than the 2016 election. There will be a major political event in the US in 2022. This will set the stage for the 2024 presidential elections. There will be unprecedented violence during this election cycle as people start to splinter into like-thinking groups for acceptance and safety. Then there is the 2028 presidential election cycle. This is where societal thinking will change from, if you don't think like me, I hate you, to, if you don't think like me, I will kill you. This election cycle, you will see people killing each other over their political beliefs. Once this happens, civilization, as we know, will end in 5 to 10 years. Then the civilization will segment into like-thinking tribes for safety. And eventually, the world will start a new civilization cycle again. Hopefully, learning from the mistakes of the previous civilization cycle. Let's hope we don't end up in another 600 years dark age like what happened at the end of the Roman civilization. A side note, we no longer have a functioning government in the USA. The US government has devolved into a grudge match. All over the world, people are tired of the corruption in government. Governments will simply tax their economies into collapse to stay in power. When the economy collapses, revolution or civil war is not far away. The US economy is the heart of the world economic engine. So it will be the last to collapse. This civilization will collapse because of massive corruption in all governments and debt levels across all levels of government that is unsustainable when interest rates rise for governments. That is when the governments will hunt for money any way they can get it. 
The money will be sucked out of the economy until their economy collapses. The collapse has been underway since the 70s. We lost in Vietnam, and we have not been back to the moon. The collapse was triggered by the oil crisis. The debasement of the coinage is one of the tells for economic collapse. Just for the fun of it, compare a nickel minted in the 1970s to one minted today. The debasement is evident. Pennies are not made of copper. Copper is too expensive. Constitutional money is kept way below market value by paper gold and silver. If silver had its true value, a single silver eagle would purchase 16 hours of common labor. As long as the gas flows, the system stays together. The petrodollar and the shale oil boom has kept gas in the pumps. With the Fed, actual economics do not matter. They can continue to fund unprofitable oil production right up, and until the point, the dollar dies. And when the dollar dies, the banker elite in their own ship of state will roll over. What follows is broken supply chains, failed cities, and failed states. The oligarchy has known the unwind is coming. That is why the deep state has moved to Mormon country, and the super-rich has bought their enclaves in New Zealand. That is why homeland security has bought enough ammunition to fight a land war for 20 years. The goal is to disarm the rest of us so that we can be cordoned off and starved to death. Things are unwinding slowly. That will continue until we run up against Liebig's law of the minimum. Then it will happen all at once. The herd senses this. That is why the prepper movement is so large. That is why the populace has bought over 400 million firearms in the last decade. Disarming America will be very hard but not impossible. They might as well just try. I expect full guerrilla civil war in that case and a conflagration epic in proportion as Americans being disarmed fight like it is Armageddon. We truly are living in the opening chapters of the Turner Diaries or the Mandibles. I think that the empire already reached the summit at the end of the past century. Hence the so-called collapse will be slow and take some more decades like the one we have passed just now. Why do people allow the central banking scam? How is it possible that elected politicians and officials can be found lying blatantly every day? They just are pulling the can down the road, symptoms of an unstoppable decay. Nature probably lets grow something new, maybe something evolutionary. It always did. But that needs a lot of time. Until then, you have to accept more of the same. The petrodollar was the greatest con in history and had allowed America to live way beyond its means for the last 50 years or so. The petrodollar forces the true work and production of the rest of the world to convert their currencies to worthless US dollars as in the form of treasury sales that are essentially pure debt, plain and simple. The world has given all their labor and production to the US in a trade for these treasury sales, which funds our insatiable appetite for debt, allowing us all in America to live like paper kings. Eventually, paper kings get wet, crumble and deteriorate. That is where we are. And the world has woken up to this fact and are already circumnavigating the petrodollar system and the swift payment system as the countries of the world begin to repatriate and hoard gold and silver, awaiting the great reset which will end king dollar and likely be replaced by some form of a global cryptocurrency backed by tangible assets, likely precious metals. It won't be the demise of America, but there will be pain, and lots of it for many, before we finally begin to rebuild to the point that we actually produce real products instead of moving money around during this final financialization blow off top of the US economy and end of the reign as the world leader. The world has given all their labor and production to the US in a trade for these treasury sales, which funds our appetite for debt, allowing all of us in America to live like paper kings. And in return, our leaders here in America, has for decades, been able to convince the public that we must remain the police of the world and that our young must continue to die fighting wars overseas. This has been a trade-off that the rest of the world has enjoyed. The unilateral power era is collapsing, and if things continue as they have much longer, that era will definitely be at an end. Will the war be used to attempt to stave off this collapse? In any case, significant social engineering will be needed to fortify the empire going forward. The crash will be a crisis that will not go to waste. It will allow substantial social engineering. I suspect that our owners are split on the kind of social engineering that will take place after the crash. One side posits socialism, Green New Deals, and MMT, FDR Part 2. Trump posits, what? 2009 Redix, Endless Hot War, MAGA, it's less clear where the Trump road leads. 
The US is in decline, but it is not due to elites, only whoever they may be. It is due to the abandonment of the principles that made the country great, federalism, limited government, individualism rather than collectivism. Today, most people want something from the government, not to be free from it. It is also unclear that a multiracial society can be successful long term. We've been in recession ever since the Fed started QE. They fool only the foolish. The US is today just a war machine run by a criminal crime syndicate of government and corporate America. Our currency has been devalued since 1971, and society is more decadent and perverted than ever in its history. The only question now is, will the elites allow the crash to spread further into Main Street and strike markets before or after the 2020 election? No truer words were ever spoken. Trump, Merkel, Macron, Johnson, Trudeau, and most leaders of the Western world are bankers' own puppets. There is no republic left in precious little democracy. Oligarchic banksters reign supreme over what are in effect slave colonies that are fed a daily diet of lies and propaganda. The question is how to escape this lunatic slave colony created for us when most of the occupants have warped minds, and some are certifiably mad. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.